I now declare open the 12th meeting of COP26. So first, I now invite the COP to adopt the decision entitled Glasgow Climate Pact contained in document FCCC stroke CP stroke 2021 stroke L13. I see China is seeking an intervention. I invite China to take the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. According to what uh, India, China, South Africa, and Bolivian delegates and like-minded countries and other developing countries uh, express concerns, we have talked to the to other stakeholders and parties concerned, carried out consultation with a view to ensuring the success of this uh, meeting. We have found a constructive uh, program. The elements have been submitted to the president. We thank all the parties for their flexibility. Thank you. Thank you, uh, China. I see India wishes to take the floor. India, uh, you have the floor. Uh, Mr. President, thank you very much for uh, to provide an opportunity to us. On the text of Para 20, of discussion of one oblique COP26, and Para 36 of the draft decision of one oblique CMA3, we, after discussion with, discussion with the presidency and various stakeholders in the other countries, the next text we propose and will be read as follow. If you permit me, I read that. Okay. Now, I propose call upon parties to accelerate the development, deployment, and dissemination of technologies and adoption of policies to transition towards low emission energy systems, including by rapidly scaling up deployment of clean power generation and energy efficiency measures, including accelerating effort to face down unabated coal power and phase out inefficient fossil fuel subsidies while providing targeted support to the poorest and the most vulnerable in line with national circumstances and recognizing the need for support towards a just transition. Thank you. Thank you to uh, China, India for their interventions. Uh, dear delegates, uh, you have a uh, revised proposal uh, for the paragraphs that were set out uh, by Minister Yadav. Um, could I ask um, whether distinguished delegates, having heard the proposal, is this proposal agreeable to you? I have two uh, interventions. I have an intervention from Switzerland. Switzerland, I give you the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. On behalf of the EIG, we would like to express our profound disappointment that the language that we have agreed on, on coal and fossil fuel subsidies, has been further watered down as a result of an intransparent process. Let us be clear. We do not need to face down, but to face out coal and fossil fuel subsidies. We were told in the stock take meeting that no changes can be adopted to the presented text when we try to close a loophole in the market decision. The EIG does not want to risk that we leave Glasgow without an outcome. Therefore, we did not oppose this additional last-minute change weakening the outcome of Glasgow, but we are disappointed both about the process and about this last-minute change. This will not bring us closer to 1.5,
but make it more difficult to reach it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Switzerland, for your intervention. The European Union wishes to take the floor. I give the floor to the European Union. Thank you, Mr. President. It is no secret uh, to this gathering that the European Union would have wanted to go even further than the initial uh, text uh, in uh, uh, the uh, cover, uh, cover text on coal. Uh, this is a consequence of our own painful experience with coal. Uh, we all know that European wealth was built on coal, and if we don't get rid of coal, European death will also be built on coal. We know full well that coal has no future. And this is what we're working on with our own plans to put an end to coal in Europe in uh, the foreseeable future. Having said that, and then uh, of course it will be no surprise to you that um, what was just read out to us is a further disappointment. Not because we want to be right, but because we know that the longer you take to get rid of coal, the more burden you put on a natural environment, but also the more burden you put on your economy, because coal is simply not a smart economic proposition either. That's why we want to speed up the exit out of coal. Now, having said all that, if I look at the conclusions we are going to be drawing today, we are going to work bloody hard on getting rid out of, uh, of coal, and I believe this conclusion will help us work in that direction. The European Union will be strongly committed to that, not just within the European Union, but also with our partners worldwide. And for us, the model we have found together with the United Kingdom, the United States, Germany and France on South Africa should be the template of how we help other coal-producing countries to rid themselves of this fossil. And that is, Mr. President, what we will want to do in the years to come. So, having now expressed uh, my disappointment, I want to reiterate what I said in my earlier intervention. This should not stop us from deciding today on what, even before you've read everything, I have to say is a historic, historic decision under your leadership, uh, and you can be very proud of that, Mr. President. I, I, thank, I thank the European Union for their intervention. Uh, I now give the floor to Liechtenstein. Liechtenstein, you have the floor. Um. Thank you, Mr. President, and also for the great effort you made on the text. We fully align with the statement made by Switzerland on behalf of the EIG. Liechtenstein is deeply disappointed that this COP26 was not held as a fully inclusive and transparent process. Small countries were not equally represented in the bilateral consultations with the COP presidency, and we believe weakening the language regarding the phase out of fossil fuels, especially coal, is more ambitious nor in line with reaching the 1.5 degrees temperature goal. For the greater good, we must swallow this bitter pill. Thank you and back to you, Mr. President. Thank, Thank you, Liechtenstein, for your intervention. Uh, I now give the floor to Mexico. Mexico, you have the floor. Mexico fully aligns with the statement made by Switzerland on behalf of the EIG. We believe we have been sidelined in a non-transparent and non-inclusive process. At the stock take, we already compromised to what we perceived 
was an agreement by parties, even if we were unhappy with the text. But now we learn that there are even further ch changes that we were not being made aware. We all have remaining concerns, but we're told we could not reopen the text. Mexico, for example, believes the language on human rights should have been strengthened and are very, very disappointed that such demands were not heard, while others can still ask to water down our promises. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to Mexico for that intervention. Uh, I now call Marshall Islands to take the floor. Marshall Islands, you have the floor. Thank you, President. On behalf of the Marshall Islands, I wish to read into the record our profound disappointment with the change in the language on coal from phase out to phase down. I ask that this be reflected in the report of this meeting. This commitment on coal had been a bright spot in this package. It was one of the things we were hoping to carry out of here and back home with pride. And it hurts deeply to see that bright spot dim. We accept this change with the greatest reluctance. We do so only, and I really want to stress, only because there are critical elements of this package that people in my country need as a lifeline for their future. Thank you. Thank you, Marshall Islands, for your intervention. Uh, I will now take an intervention from Fiji. Fiji, you have the floor. Um, thank you, um, Mr. President. Uh, a few days ago, in fact about four days ago, when we talked about some language on loss and damage, we were told that we are introducing something at the last minute. It's rather ironic that just about two hours ago when we discussed the text and now there's an amendment being made to that, and that I would call last minute, without any due process, going, due process being followed. Um, I think the, the, the point of the matter is that 1.5 degree has always been a red line for us, in particular low-lying countries, island states. What we'd like to express, of course, is not just our astonishment, but our immense disappointment uh, in the manner in which this has been introduced. And secondly, that we seem to be dealing with these various clauses in a disjointed fashion. There's no confluence between the earlier clauses prior to this that talks about the 1.5 degree, and indeed the impact on our ability to reach 1.5 degree by having a now what we call a phase down, which in fact has no demonstrable measurements, no methodology as to what, how we will measure this phase down. And I think that is critically important, and we need to remember that. And I hope all the other countries that have the capacity and the ability to be able to do so will in fact do so because small island states like ours do not have the capacity to be reliant on all the other good countries that believe in phasing out coal will do that for us. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Fiji, for your intervention. And I will take an intervention from Antigua and Barbuda. Thank you, Mr. President. The 39 leaders of the Alliance of Small Island States in September signed a declaration to urge major emitters, particularly the G20, to phase out all fossil fuel subsidies by 2023. We were disappointed to find the addition of the inefficiency from the G20 language, but can accept that this is as far as we can go today. The challenges with securing today's historic commitment for the UNFCCC historic to phase out inefficient fossil fuels, despite knowing that this is factually required to stay on a 1.5 degree global pathway, deeply concerns AOSIS. The challenges of the energy transition are real, and we recognize that the political risks that come with the climate change response and the monopolistic nature of the fossil fuel industry in today's world are real. 
we need to double down on retraining workforces so that this is an easy decision to make going forward. We appreciate uh, uh, the outcome of today and uh, we can accept the changes, although we uh, reiterate the challenges around the process. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Antigua and Barbuda, for your intervention. Um, may I just say to all uh, delegates, um, I apologize for the way this process has unfolded, um, and uh, I'm deeply sorry. I also understand the, the deep disappointment. But I think, as you have noted, it's also vital that we um, protect this package. Delegates, please. Delegates, thank, thank you. Thank you, friends. We, 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 we need to proceed. Thank you very much. Um, so given what interventions we've had, um, I propose that the revised proposal is adopted uh, as orally amended. A revised version, a written version, will be issued shortly. Hearing no objections, it is so decided. Thank <laughs> you.